Hey, what is up YouTube? Colst here and I'm making this video to talk about the 10 most powerful cards to draft in Arena today. And the main reason I'm making this video is because of course, if you're not aware, most people probably are by now, but in Arena, they're trying a new drafting structure, which is live, where you are guaranteed to get one legendary per deck. You only will ever get one but you will get one and it's also going to be the first pick of your draft. This has changed a lot about how you draft your deck because a lot of legendaries could be weird because they are build around cards. And this has allowed certain legendaries to really shine more than before just because you can actually build around them properly from the beginning. And before I get into the actual list, I should mention as well, there are a lot of cards that will not be showing up on this list that should be showing up on this list or would be, except they are banned, such as all hero cards except for one, which we will mention on this list. Lord Maragar is banned and all of the Titans are banned and maybe there are others. I'm not sure. I think that's it though. And I wanted to make this video just to talk about, you know, basically what these legendaries are that you're going to be looking for. And I'll talk a little bit too about each one on just a little bit of how you actually want to properly build around these cards to maximize your win rate when you do get them. Because a lot of these, specifically the class cards, are very common. You, a lot of them are in between like 10 and even up to 25% of their class's decks. So it's definitely worth thinking about this a little bit. So with that all out of the way, let's start talking about this. So the first card we will have here at number 10 on the list, going from weakest, quote unquote, to strongest, is Ignis. Ignis does have a condition, which is you are not guaranteed yet. By the way, one problem is that you can go 29 picks without actually getting a forged card. But as long as you have forged a card this game, you get a really, really powerful weapon. It is possible if you're just really desperate to go for a one mana weapon. But generally speaking in Arena, you will see and you generally want to go for more value than that. So you'll go for either the five or the 10 cost options. And generally speaking, the thing you're really looking for is to go for Wind Fury and then go for one of the really strong second options with Wind Fury, such as armor or eight, like four or eight drops, depending on which one you chose. Now, you don't always get that in certain times, like Poison or Cleave can also be good. But that's part of what makes Ignis very interesting. It forces you to make a dynamic read based on the situation and which offerings you actually get to just choose the best option. Because it's very possible you lose a game you could have won by, for example, going for a 5 when you could have gotten away with a 10, or going for a 10 when you could not get away with going for a 10. So it is a very interesting card to have in Arena. At number 9 on this list here, I am going to be putting Lord Draxus. Draxus is a card that definitely wouldn't have been on this list uh, if I would have done it in the past. But one thing that has happened in this meta change is that there is a lot of just drawn out games. There's a lot of defense. So this kind of inevitability from Lord Draxus is very, very strong now, much more than it used to be. In addition, if you're not aware, Lord Draxus was adjusted to eight mana. So that also just helps you either get it down a turn earlier or even play it on turn 10 and use your hero power in the same turn. And there is going to be a common theme for a lot of these legendaries that a lot of them have that kind of an inevitability factor to allow you to basically win any long game with anyone that doesn't have such an inevitability effect. Draxus is relatively speaking one of the weaker ones just because it's slow and it's harder to get down but it also is very strong if you can get away with it and since you have it on pick one you know that the rest of your deck really can just be trying to keep yourself alive so i think that helps it for sure be a good card in this meta and with that and speaking of inevitability factors at number eight on this list we have dr holiday so dr holiday is the first of these no duplicate cards so that does make your decks potentially weaker however with this five mana four or five you get a sap of the nine frogs so that is actually a two damage nine charge weapon that summons a frog that gets bigger and bigger every turn it basically allows you it's a one card that just allows you to be basically a full jade deck so of course there is obviously an ignis has this problem too there is a chance that your weapon gets removed but other than that in this case this is also just an incredibly powerful inevitability effect because all of those frogs have taunt and at a certain point it's just going to overwhelm your opponent. So as a result, in spite of its requirement to be a Highlander deck, that was enough of a powerful effect to get on this list. And with that at number seven on this list, I think this probably will be the most shocking card to make this list for a lot of people. We actually have the Hunter Legendary Acid Maw. This is a card that came back from Caverns of Time and it was one of the cards that got the biggest buff possibly ever in the entire history of Hearthstone. I believe it used to be seven mana, if I'm not mistaken, and they buffed it to a three mana four two. 
but also only affects enemies. So effectively, it basically turns all of your spells, all your weapons, all of your minions, all into poison. And the reason I think this card is performing so well in the stats right now is basically because it just does exactly what Hunter does. Hunter doesn't really need super inevitability all the time. A lot of the time, it just needs to get a little bit ahead, and then all of its spells, weapons, hero power, damage will just end the game. And that's what Acid Maw will let you do, just get a disgusting swing turn that will just put the Hunter enough ahead that they will be able to end the game. And with that, at number 6, we have actually a rather similar card effectively, but this is the strongest legendary in Death Knight now that Marigar is removed, and that is Reska the Pit Boss. Now this is a card that generally when I used it, I have had like, I think like 3 runs with Reska already. What generally happens is you will activate it around like turn 7, turn 8, and it's just going to be a 0 mana card right around that point. Sometimes very rarely you might actually spend some mana on it, but usually you will actually play it at zero mana. And then you are just trying to set up the ideal spot. We have one minion you can rush into and kill off the Ruska, and then you can mind control the second minion on your opponent's board. A lot of time, the one difficulty is it's it's difficult to often get the perfect hit for a Ruska. People just don't necessarily play perfectly into it, but still it almost ends up all being really good because even if you don't get the perfect hit, it's just so efficient and it costs you probably nothing. It's just very, very good. And there are some synergies such with the excavates that you can resummon it as well and that just helps even more. So this is another card that usually will not single-handedly win the game but it just gets you into a dominating position and Death Knight has other cards that will get you the rest of the way. And with that and moving into the top five on this list and talking about a card that will a lot more win the game by itself at least with some help of synergy from some of your other cards that is the warrior legendary Odin. Odin allows you to turn all of your armor gain also into damage and I've had a 12-0 Odin my run myself so I really appreciate how powerful this is there are times I was ending the game with like 20 plus damage from hand I think the one thing you do want to be really careful with with Odin is that you don't need to troll like at a certain point you don't just take every single armor card you just don't need to obviously value them higher but you just want to make sure you also have a functional deck because the big thing you should be trying to do is just get to the Odin you just don't need all of the armor in the world you will probably win anyway once you've actually played that card so the thing you want to really do is get you there now armor does help you get there but you know you just want to make sure you don't completely lose the board at least not if you have sanitizers to clean up so overall that makes odin one of the most powerful win conditions in arena period and again it's one of those cards where because you get to pick it on pick one it really allows you to build around it properly with that at number four we have the last neutral on this list and that is prison of yogsaron this is a card you play it for seven mana and you get three different casts of four random spells targeting whatever you want. It's pretty simple in how it's just really, really strong. It just does, on average, way more than you should get for a single card. It can troll you, but on average, it's just doing way more than you could expect. It comes down earlier than Puzzle Box, for example, and Puzzle Box was 10 mana for 10 spells. This is 7 mana for 12. And additionally, I think it's also better that you get to spread it out because sometimes Puzzle Box just is way more than you even need it to at once anyway. And so because of all of that, that is why very often and of Yogg's run in almost every class it's the best card they actually have available to them. But with that we're going to move into the top three and with this I think this will be possibly well this and number two are probably actually going to be very surprising that they made it this high in the list but this is how well they are performing in the stats. At number three we are going to have Drilly the Kid the Rogue Legendary. This card is a four mana four three which allows you to get at least two excavates almost always and often three if you're able to quick draw it and I think it's a little bit deceiving just how good this card is for a couple reasons first of all this is one of the two excavate cards available to rogue the other one is the one mana weapon and essentially if you don't have this card you're not getting to your tier four treasure so that's very important so it helps a lot to have that and the other reason is that this essentially is just a really, really good tempo card because all the excavates are a lot of tempo. You are overpaying for a 4 mana 4-3, 
but those excavates are just going to do a lot they're going to give you a lot of value a lot of very tempo efficient value basically always so overall this card just does a lot very mana efficiently and if you have one more excavate or you can even like bounce this potentially to get another battle cry or quick draw as well that's going to allow you to get the tier four which is infinite value as well basically so that's just allows it to do a whole lot makes it a very very powerful card next up at number two on this list we have Rooney time explorer this is probably one of the most interesting cards in the game because the three mana three four battle cry discover a location from the future there are seven exclusive locations you can get from this and they do very very different things that are all very very powerful and I kind of like thematically the basic admission that yeah, anything from the future is going to be unbelievably power corrupt essentially. And so that does make it a very tricky card to use because the cards are very different and it is very possible to throw a game by just picking the wrong location, for example, or misusing them. For example, sometimes you might want infinite value from all of getting the dragon option, but however, you know, sometimes you just can't afford that. You might need some of the removal or something more disruptive or such as like copying a minion and getting taunt or going for the secrets just for disruption for example but overall these locations are all just very very strong and it's very likely that if you are able to play one of these it will actually win you the game so that is why Rooney gets so high on this list but with that let's move on to number one and this is a distant number one by the way I don't actually think it is close the number one best card strongest in arena right now is the druid legendary Highlander card, Riastraza. Riastraza does everything because yes, okay, it is slow the turn you play, it's an 8 mana 8-8. Eight, eight. However, it is the strongest inevitable ability effect probably to ever exist in Arena, period. This thing would make some of the Death Knight heroes that were banned from Arena blush at just how much better this card is as a late game tool. You get a free dragon every single turn, which costs or less and you're able to get just so many things from this you can get the dragon that discovers other dragons and there are just so many good tempo dragons you can get that if this thing sticks for like a turn or two you've already won the game and because it is an uninteractable thing that it puts on the board there and there is no counter to it in arena effectively technically you could discover arena if you're a priest actually but generally anytime you play your opponent has maybe a turn or two maybe three to face rush you with everything they have but then the game is over and so that is why riastraza is the number one strongest card in arena in my opinion and the stats show this as well and by the way i did mention the occurrence rate of some of these cards and this is also by coincidence or maybe not coincidence it was probably done on purpose that Ria Estraza is also the most common legendary in the game, appearing in 25% of Druid decks. And now I don't know that they should really, maybe they don't need to outright ban this card. And by the way, it's also very discoverable. So it's even more common than that, I should mention as well. I do think it definitely does not need to be in 25% of decks. I do hope they at least reduce that by quite a bit. Because really, Rhea Estraza is a pretty miserable experience to lose to. You see it and it, you, you lose. There's You're going to lose probably slowly, but there's really most likely nothing you can do but with that let me know what you guys think in the comment section below are there any cards i missed i might as well mention a couple like honorable mentions were chromie the mage legendary ecologarn ysera these are cards that just didn't quite make the cut here but i'd be interested to hear what you think about any of this as well don't forget to like the video and make sure you're subscribed and click the bell to make sure you're notified for all of this glorious arena content in this new era of arena maybe is it too early to say that it might be but that's just we'll just call it that anyway anyway i appreciate you all hanging out to the end of course i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye